Well, praise the Lord. Amen. What a beautiful day. Amen. We thank the Lord. We just give God praise, glory, and honor. We know that our God is worthy. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. And I thank God. I, um, I, I feel good today. I mean, y'all out there feel good on the sound of this voice, this anointed voice. You know, they used to say this ratchet voice, but this uh, anointed voice. I, I, I thank God. I, I give God praise, glory, and honor. I am so excited. I, I just feel good. How many of y'all know that in the beginning was the Word? I'm talking about the Word of God now. Oh, praise me. Not, not the Word with the low case, but the Word with the uppercase. I, I thank God. Amen. I You know, I see a lot of saints, and I just want to put this out there. I see a lot of saints that when they, when they start talking about God, they need to realize that there's a lower case for just an ordinary thing that you call God. But it, God, when you start talking about God, he He is our God, is always capitalized, is always, it makes a difference. If you read in your Bible, when they're just talking about laws, they use low case uh, letters. When they're talking about God, they use capital letters. Uh, uh, so we, we want to make sure that we as saints follow this, follow the pathway. So we want to make sure that, that when, when years go on and something I done put down and some memories I done put together, somebody look at it, that they will know who I was talking about, that they would know I was talking about the God of God and the Lord of Lord and we're just not using the word or just throwing the word out there. It's some earthly thing. So we thank God. We give God praise, glory. And I just thought I'd throw that in there. It didn't cost nothing. Now. That was free. We ain't choking it down your throat. Now, you, we're not forcing those that are out there to receive it. But it's just, you know, when, 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 when they drop knowledge like that, you have to make sure you got a bucket there so you can pick up on it. So I give God praise, glory. I'm going to invite somebody in. Go, go on and invite someone in. Do be a, be a blessing. Do the work of an evangelist. Prepare your work in the field before you build your house. Go ahead on and amen. Because God got a blessing with your name on it. There's a word for you. Amen. The Bible declared that in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. So we want to make sure that your word is with you. We want to make sure that you... Uh, uh, everything that you need, every need that you have is met. We, by the, by the grace of Almighty God, that God is providing your needs. And I thank the Lord. I feel good today. Amen. I feel good deep down in my soul. I, you know, anytime you have a relationship with God, you know, like, it's like being in a marriage and you've been intimate and you, you know, you, you young ladies understand what I'm talking about. Sometimes the men's as well. You, you feeling so good, you get up first thing in the morning. The house is all smoked up. Uh, praise be to God. You done come in there and put some some breakfast on. Praise be to God. You want to serve your king or vice versa. You want to serve your queen because you you just feeling good because everything is coming together. Everything is feeling all right. You just in that mood, huh? And so I I, I thank God when you spend time in the presence of the Lord. When you spend intimate time with God. Praise God. I heard him say, out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. When you have an ear to hear what the Lord has to say. I'm not talking about our own opinion. You know, I read the Bible and been reading it for a while. But then, then I got I to gotta sit back and, 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 and let, let God woo me or, or let him deal with me or let him uh, minister to me. Praise be to God. Let him enlighten me, open my, my, my eyes, my ears to different things that I normally would not have gotten without his presence. So I give God praise. God. We, we do a good job and I'm not mad about that, but I'm just saying God that in my life, I can see it like this. God always do a better job. 
So I, I prefer that in whatever I'm into, I prefer seeking the face of God first. I, 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 I prefer not leaning unto my own understanding. Not that I don't have, praise God, not that I don't, amen, can't, can't, can't give an answer. But it's just the idea that I know that when I humble myself down and rely on the Lord, it's not anything that I'm, well, it, it always come out right. It just does at all. God do, just don't make no mistakes. He just that good. He, he just good all the time. And I, I, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus. See, see it's, it's a blessing given to me. See, Jesus is amongst us to serve us. God wants to serve us. And we and, and I, uh, I'm not lifted up in pride. Uh, you know, a lot of times we have children and, and we want to do something for them, especially the babies. Now, babies, you get this out of babies. A baby born and you try to do something for them, they don't learn how to do a little something. They want to do everything they except they want to hold a spoon. They don't learn how to hold a baller. They want to hold a baller. All these different things. It, 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 and they're coming up. But now when you start maturing and come on up a little bit more, then you don't mind them holding different things for you. Praise be God. You don't mind being served. You don't mind going to a restaurant and tipping a waiter or a waitress for their service. You don't mind getting somebody to come and cut the yard for you. Praise be to God. You don't mind tipping them for that. So because they're performing a service. And the Lord said, I am amongst you as a servant. I come to serve you, you know. And and, and, and he's not he's not saying that you and I have been doing a, a bad job. He's just saying we don't fully understand how everything goes. We know in part, but we don't understand how each and every part fit together. We know we have a part, but we can't. And he can see better than, than I can. He knows better. That God is God is everything. Just to be plain out, you know, not the baby you a pet you by the God knows everything. And if you try to handle it, and if you don't chuck it out of God's hand, you done messed up. And I tell you that before you even get started. <laughs> I thank the Lord, but now if you got it in the Lord and if you grown to a mature state, the Bible said when when uh, feed my lamb, feed my sheep, and feed my sheep. He said when you were young, you went to where you wanted to go. When you be old, you will go where you led to go where you would not normally originally go, but you'll go where you are led to go. So I thank God. I give God praise. Glory and honor today. I feel the revelation of Jesus Christ coming on. I feel an uplifting in my spirit. I feel like I, I feel like God is about to bless his people. And I, I don't want anybody to miss. So I'm gonna ask you again, if especially if you just came in, we would ask you that if you would just invite at least ten people, at least just if we could get everybody to invite invite at least I, I'm telling you, I'm inviting people right now. And and, and it's it's not difficult to invite 10 people. So I thank God. And just, it's just a courtesy. Just be a blessing. Just, 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 so I'm going to bless the man of God. I believe God is going to do some special thing for you when you go ahead and just be a blessing, especially if you do it not grudgingly, but just, you know, joyfully. You know, whatever seeds you sow, make sure you sow it joyfully. Make sure that you know how your return going to come. It's almost like invest in wisely, you know, praise be to God, so you know what you're going to get back, you know everything going to be all right, the Bible said, teaches us that it's more blessed to give than it is to receive, I used to hear the old men used to say, I pay the cost to be the boss, why don't you go ahead and, and pay the cost to be the boss, why don't you go ahead and put your order in, huh, I thank God, you know, I and, and then again, Deal, deal in your own circle. Pray a little bit. Seek God's faith. 
meditate a little bit. Come on, it's Father right now in the mighty and the holy and the precious name of your son, Jesus. We just come just as we are, and we come meditate, Lord God. We come seeking your face, Lord God. We know that you have something very good for us, something awesome. And, and Father, we want to be able to enjoy the savor of it. We want to be able to enjoy that flavor. We want to be able to, to just run it round in our mouth. You say, oh, taste and see, ain't the Lord good. We want to be able to taste and see, Lord, because we come with expectations today. We're not we're not babies and closed mouths don't eat and we realize that as we go as we're going places that there are different things that are trying to come up against us and trying to hinder us and yet we're not paying attention to that but at the same time we want to make sure that we are prayed up and we're praying up not to just win a battle but we're praying up to get ourselves in that expectation mode we're getting in the mood you know how how you have to get into the mood we're getting into the mood because god is about to do something very special for me god is about to answer my heart desire god is about to give me my heart desire i want to be in the right mood i i don't i don't want to share my blessing i'm just i'm not being selfish i, I just want to get to the point well, what God has for me is for me. And I thank God that God is about to enlighten my darkness. He's about to elevate me. He's, he's finna impart, take something. He's finna impart in my life, in my circle, in my going and in my coming. He's about to do something very spectacular for me. And I'm here expecting today. Oh, Father, I just, uh, Father, I'm just in the mood. I'm expecting. I know that you are awesome and everything that you do is good. So I come expecting. I'm, 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 I'm believing. I, I'm believing that I'm about to receive. I've got that in my heart. I've got that in my mind. It may be from a sickness. It may be from Praise be to God, just a promotion on the job. It may be for better conditions in the house. It may be for loved ones or whatever. But, Lord, I'm positioning myself right now to receive my heart desire because you said that you would meet all of my needs according unto your riches and glory. And God knows I have some needs, and I'm just believing you by faith right now that those needs are being met even as we meet here in this breakthrough hour, even as we assemble here, even if you have brought us in, those that are already in and those that are yet to come in, that every need is met today. And therefore, Father, we give you praise, glory, and honor. We, we realize that you are somebody that we don't have to wait until the job is over to pay because we're afraid that you won't do it. But we know that we can pay you in advance. We can praise you in advance. We can go ahead and lift you up because we know what what the magnitude that you're working in. The, we, we know the degree that you're working in. We know that it's far above anything that we could ever think or imagine. So we give you the praise, the glory, and the honor. And just a show of our faith and our trust in you, we just glorify, magnify you right now. I just hear the Spirit of God say, let God be magnified. Let God be magnified. Let God be magnified in our going. Let God be magnified in our coming. Let God be magnified in our homes. Let God be magnified in our relations. Let God be magnified in the midst of our families, in the midst of our children, in the midst of our loved ones. Let God be magnified. Oh, I just praise you right now, Father. Just give you the praise, the glory, and the honor, Lord. I'm just lifting you up right now, Father. I'm just, oh, Father God, I, I feel like there's a blessing with my name on that feel like something is about to happen spectacularly here today and I'm, I'm believe that finally out of all of these years that I have I have something coming from you that is awesome today so I give you praise glory and I believe your peoples are about to receive here today and I just give you praise glory and honor. we've been told so many different things that we believe so many different things and yet we have held on to your unchanging hand and so we believe it right now that you're finna do some things for us we believe it 
right now that there are some doors that are being opened. We're believing, Father, we are sowing seeds, and we are sowing seed by faith. And we realize, even in our teaching, Father, that we realize what prayer really is. We realize that we, are, when we pray, we are actually sowing seeds. And as we pray, we realize as time go on, just like our collard greens come up, just like our lima beans, just like our black eyed peas, that our, our prayers is bringing forth the fruit of bringing forth what we have been praying for. And it's coming to us and it's all coming together. And we realize as we as we fertilize, as we water with the word of God, as we take care of our God, as we keep our hearts pure, as we keep our lives pure, and, and Father, we keep it pure by our faith. It, it's not about any works. It's about our faith, and our faith today, Almighty God, is in you, and we're believing. We're believing that our children are being being made free, and not just set free, but we're believing that they're being made free. We're believing that they're being established. We're believing that every snare, we're believing that every net, that everything that has been set forth in the spirit realm and that, that, that exists on this earth to tear them down, to destroy them. Father God, we believe in that Haman has hung himself on his own noose. We believe that the, that the, that the holes that were dug for our young people, the holes that were dug for us to fall in, the traps and the snares that were set for us, we believe in that those that set those traps, we believe in that they're going to reap what they sow. We're believing that you're blessing. We're, we're praying right now for our enemies. We're praying for those that deceitfully misuse us. We're praying. We're staying. We're staying in love. We are sowing the seed of love. We have not been altered by anything that has come against us. We're remaining faithful. We know that in you there is no darkness. So therefore, we have no negative prayers to pray. We have no negative feelings to feel. We, we feel from the light of God. We feel from the awesomeness of God. And as we feel, we feel ourselves being, being drawn in closer to you. Because we finally come to the point of the realize what's been keeping us away from you is just those negative things that does not exist in you. And when they cannot exist in you, they won't be able to draw nigh to you. But right now, Father, we do the uh, we do what we supposed to do. We forgive each and everybody that has ever offended us, that has ever been indebted to us, no matter what it is, no matter how much pain, no matter whether we suffered or not. We release them, Father God, right now. We just, we just release them. We forgive them. And as we, 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 I don't care what it is, Father. It is forgiven. I don't care what it is. We have no grudges. I don't care what it is. There's nothing that we hold against them. And at the same time, Father, we want to thank you for as we have forgiven, we are forgiven. And so we give you the praise, the glory. Now, there is nothing that, there's no weapon formed against us that, that, that will ever prosper. We are, we, are, we are in the way, Father. We are in the way. We have the wisdom of God is to forgive and nothing attacks to us. The word of God is, a, is an oil, is an ornament, is, a, is an anointing that is pulled down on us and it prevents anything from, a, from attaching to us, from getting into our ears, from getting into our hearts, from getting into our eyes, that oil has it slipping down. The word of God is moving it today. The word of God is dissolving it today. The fire of the Holy Ghost is burning up negativity, even that starts within us, Father God. The beams that have been in our eyes, the way we've seen things, are dissolved today. They've, they've loosened us. They've turned us loose. We, we don't see the way we used to see. We don't think the way we used to think. We've got a new body in our body is 
spirit. We're not living in the flesh. We're living in the spirit. And we thank you, Father God. We have a, we have a new wine and it's, it, it's a spiritual wine and it's meant to sustain the spirit. So we, our, our eyes, our minds, our thoughts is taken off of the substantiation of the cardinal realm, but it's placed totally in the spirit realm. And in the spirit realm, Everything else is fed and everything else is water and the eternal life that we have is so awesome. It's just causing everything around us to blossom. Even as Jacob was with Levin and Levin began to be blessed because of the presence of Jacob, just as the Holy Spirit is within us and the flesh is blossoming just because of the presence of of the Holy Spirit. So our bodies are healed. Our minds are healed. Nothing negative is able to affect us because of the positivity of the Holy Spirit. And that is a fire that is automatically burning up anything that would bring in anything dark, that would bring in anything harmful, hurtful, even the tongues that have ever risen up against us, that has any intention to rise up against us, that has risen against us this day. We do condemn, Father God. We condemn it because we have faith in your word. This is what you have told us to do. And walking in obedience as how can two walk together unless they agree. We agree and we have no thoughts to what are the conditions, the good or the bad. We're not looking at it as the tree of knowledge of good and evil. We're just looking at it as the tree of obedience. And we're just obeying. We're just in, in, in our Father's house. House, and we know that we obey him because to disobey him is as the spirit of witchcraft. And we know we don't have the spirit of witchcraft has no existence in the spirit of God. It does not have any power or any room or any place. Neither does it touch or affect the saints. So we give God praise, glory, and honor this day. And in that we do in the mighty name of Jesus. Now open our hearts and our minds that we may be able to receive. We just want to talk to your people today. So give us wisdom and understanding. Give us patience to hear the full story and not part of it. So I thank you in Jesus' name. I give God praise, glory, and honor. I thank the Lord. You know, I, I, God is so good and I've been reading. If somebody ought to say amen if they're in agreement now. If you believe the thing Things that have been spoken. If you want to water the seed, that if you have received the seed and want to water it, you ought to say amen that God, the word of God, may truly give it the increase. And I thank God. I give God praise, glory, and honor. You know, I was reading in the book of Ephesians, and, and, and you know, as, as I began to read in the book of Ephesians, well, actually, God was talking to me, and he was sharing some things, and, and it just began to lead me to go to look up some things or look out some things. Actually, I went into the book of Genesis in that 49th chapter because I wanted to read about the blessing that, that Jacob spoke over his sons. And, and you know that Moses did the same. And then I want to, I, I wanted to look at, praise be to God, amen, the prophets and the apostles and, 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 and the things, the doctrine of the apostles and the doctrine of, of the word of God, of Christ. So, I wanted to make sure I was on point with everything. So, and then I began to be led to the book of Ephesians, the second chapter, and in, in, in that chapter, two verse it said, and came and preached. Uh, well, well, wait a minute, wait a minute. It, it said, uh, this, this is a very significant thing in this, uh, in this 13th verse. It said, now, but now Christ, but now in Christ Jesus, Ye who sometime were far off and are made nigh by the blood of Christ, for he is our peace, who has made both one and have and have broken down the mill wall of petition between us, having abolished in his flesh the enmity, even the law of commandments contained in the ordinances. Oh man, God did some powerful things in fulfillment feeling the word of God. And for, he, he said that within his body, within his body, 
the hatred, the enmity is destroyed that was spoken, that was supposed to be between Adam, uh, Eve seeds and the devil seed and between the woman and the serpent. Oh, and he was saying that the cross dissolved all that. And even in the, in, in the Mosaic laws, he began to say that the cross done away, it just dissolved. It, it paid up that. It, it, it's not that it's good, it's bad. It's, just, it's a debt that's paid. And it's paid in full. So he began to say all of that thing does not exist in the saints. And, you know, a lot of time, even when, you know, I, I had my ankle broke years ago when I was a young fella out there playing football. And it was swollen. It was broken. And they kept me to the hospital. And, you know, even after my ankle was healed, I, I was still walking around uh, uh, limping. I still, I still had a limp. And I... I didn't realize that the limp was not in my body, it was in my mind. And 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 the way I got healed from it is I caught myself. You ever woke up and heard yourself snowing? I, I caught myself, praise be to God, walking upright. And I it triggered us, oh man, I thought you were your leg was messed up, I thought, and it finally dawned on me that I could walk. You, you know, I have, I have a thing with my children and grandchildren and whatever, and, and, and I believe that a baby should be walking around about seven months old. Now, I know you can pet someone, but I, I believe they're totally capable of, of walking around six or seven months old. What I've always been able to do is take a baby right here by the bite of their little vest and hold them up. Oh, they wrestle and don't want to walk, but I hold them up and make them walk. And, and, and when they start to take it a few steps, if you're very strategic, you can take your hand off of that child and that child won't even know that your hand is taken up off of them. And before they'll, they'll find themselves walking there. They'll fall down. They'll drop down once they become conscious of their walking. But after a few times after that, that baby will be walking six or seven months old. That baby will be walking because now in his mind or in her mind, she's, he can do it. So, and they're always, they're young. They want to learn something. They want to, they want to be the mama. They want to be the, they want to run things. So they, they, they will do it. But now if you, if you to the point where you, uh, believe that they can't, I won't force it on you, but I've never had a problem with it. So I, I, I thank God. And in saying that, you know, it's just like, when, when you are free, when you, when you, when you are no longer, you, sometimes you in a relationship, you young ladies, young men, you ought to be able to identify with that. And you've been in a relationship, an abusive relationship or whatever type relationship. And, and, and you, and the relationship is over. The other part is gone. It wasn't no good for you. Uh, uh, you wasn't no good for them and they're gone. But somewhere in your mind, it's still there. And you got a problem getting rid of them and you got to get rid of the clothes and the clothes in the closet of your mind much longer than it was in your house. You done packed up everything and throwed it on the porch. I don't want to be involved with you no more. Blah, blah, blah. But, but it's still affecting your life and you need some time away from it, not just run and jump right into another relationship. You need some time to get that stuff up out of you because it's still bothering me with you. So, so what he's saying here is that by the cross of Christ, that it, it got rid of the enmity. It got rid of the Mosaic commandments. It got rid of it. it. In other words, it fulfilled it. It didn't tear it up, throw it away and all that. He fulfilled all this. When See, what it is is for those that understand marriage. See, when you're married to somebody, young lady, if you go out and be with somebody else, you commit adultery as long as the other person is alive. But now, if your husband be dead and you go out and hook up with somebody, you're no longer an adulteress. So now what happens is when, when sin came in, the flesh, because of the obedience to the sin, the flesh become married to it. And the word enmity was spoken between the two seeds because that was a wrestling match. Oh, oh praise God, we won't get rid of that wrestling match you got today. See, that was a wrestling match going on inside of the flesh. 
and, and, and praise be to God. So you were, you were divided. You were not able to be one because God is one. Father, Son, and Holy Ghost is one. So they, they, they on one accord. How can two walk together unless they be first in agreement? Uh, uh, the only way to spoil a, a good man's house is to first, is to first bind the good man. So in the Garden of Eve, that's exactly what happened. So enmity was placed in there because the flesh had married sin. And, and so in due season, in due season, and in the proper time, God sent forth his son, born of a woman, inside of that flesh. He, he sent his son, born of a woman, to, to take sin up out of the world. So now, when you get to the point where Jesus Christ has been crucified, dead and buried, and the blood has come scribbling down to cover that altar, to keep the beasts of the field from multiplying and coming up on that altar, having no access to it. When that blood comes scribbling down at Calvary, come on now, somebody. So, so when that blood came scribbling down, that blood covered that, and that blood paid the sin debt. His death, he was dead three days. He was in the grave three days. Now, they don't want you to believe that, but he was legally dead because if you in the grave through that, you were legally dead. So he was, he had paid the sin debt on both, on both occasions for his enmity and the Masonic law. It was paid in full. So then the stone was pushed back and he was raised from the dead. Now what happened is, is sin, when, when, when he died, he died. Amen. The spirit of God left up out of it and he died. So when he died, he paid the sin debt. So when the sin debt was paid, when God raised him up, he raised him up as a new vessel, as a new body. And when you receive Christ Jesus, you raised up in a new vessel, in a new body, with a new wine. And what it means, a new wine, is a new understanding, a, a renewing of the spirit spirit of your mind. You're no longer conscious of that bad abusive relationship you were in. You, you, you separated yourself from there. So those things does not have any power over you. He's giving you a peace within yourself. But now he, you're not just going to know that just like that. You've got the, you've got the desire to sincere milk. You got to understand what has happened. That a sin that you were married, was married to the flesh, has, has, has been taken up out of the body because the sin debt is paid. So, it, so you can look at it as though sin has died and now God has rose up the body by his spirit. So now instead of being married, the body and the, and the spirit being the, the body and sin being married, now the body is married to the spirit of God. So now you are no longer an adulteress, but you are free to marry Christ. And when you say, I confess out of my mouth and I believe in my heart that God raised him from the dead, you take the marriage vows and you call on the name of Jesus. You kiss your, the bride is being kissed. So, so the marriage now has come together. You are married to, 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 to the Lamb of God. You are married to Christ. So you are no longer the same. Your last name is no longer Elroy. Your last name is named after God. Now, you are of the family of the households of God. You are a saint now. I, I, I thank God. So what he, and, 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 and this is, this is just, this is just a, a fruit for thought. That, that you can begin to forget about that connection you had. Forget about the things that happened now. Now you got power, and you got power as you've been using the power that you had for a negative thing. You've got power to do it in a positive thing, but you've got the desire to sincere milk of the word. And the sincere milk of the word is telling us to love and not hate. The sincere milk of the word, we're on a different bottle. You suck in a different titty now. And the titty that you are sucking has a word coming in that we are to have love one for another. We are not to call down fire, but we come to save lives and not to destroy life because sin come to kill, to steal, and destroy. But the Spirit of God has come to us to reconcile 
now and it has given us a peace within ourselves and you need to get rid of the consciousness of that sin for life that you have or that sin being in your life. You need to stop yielding your members to your ex over there and any of his father because now when, 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 when you are dead, when your husband dies, you can marry up with the son and have children. You can, you can marry up with his brother and, and break forth children in that. But if you don't step out and marry Christ, see, see, in other words, Israel was, Israel was without a husband. Israel had no husband. Israel had no savior. John the Baptist said it like this, because in the Old Testament, they were called that when, when, when the, when the brother would not marry his, 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 his brother's wife to bring forth fruit, she would spit in his face and he would be called he that has his shoes untied. Well, John the Baptist said it like this about Jesus. He said, I'm not worthy to unloose his shoes because he indeed came to pay the sin debt. He indeed come to marry uh, Adam's wife. He indeed come to marry to redeem us from sin. He indeed come to renew us now. And, and, and so you've got a different consciousness, and that's something very significant God was dealing with me about today, because there's, there's, a, a, there's prophets. The Bible said in the book of Ephesians, I like to read that. He said, he said and, and are built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the head cornerstone. And you were running the ministries, the ministers that do not understand the significance of that statement. And they will begin to tell you that there are no more apostles. Oh, praise be to God. So, so now, now, now that I, I got no problem. You don't understand the veins. There were, there were three veins and each vein put out four. And I, can I say it like this? There are three veins and there, there, there's, there's Abraham. That's Isaac, and they're Jacob, and they oh praise be to God, huh? And, and, and as the oil flow down, you got twelve children, so you got twelve prophets there. Now Abraham was a prophet, Isaac was a prophet, Jacob was a prophet, huh? Praise be to God. So they brought forth fruit after its own time. They brought forth the fruits of prophets. So I thank God for these prophets that are out there. Now, if, if, if there are no more apostles and the foundation is built upon the prophet and the apostles, then there can be no more prophets. But now we do know that when the 12 sons of Jacob, uh, praise be to God, where after they was gone, then we still got Isaiah. We still got Elijah. We still got major prophets that are out there. So that's something in the milk that just not clean. But then if you got the doctrine of the Pharisees, Jesus said, be aware of the doctrine of the Pharisees and the supplicies because number one, they, they stoned the prophets and they wanted to kill the son. Oh, praise be to God. So they're not going to be able, and, 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 and you've got to have a sober mind to understand the significance of your calling. You've got to have a soul for mind to understand the, the significance of your household and the authorities and the blessing that you have from Almighty God. Now, the prophets, they normally was was, was, was chosen. They normally, God had oil poured over their head and he would go and, and, and anoint the king and anoint the prophet and, 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 and bring forth a prophet. Now, in the last days, God himself began to be the one and poured out the oil on them that he sent. See, now in the book of Revelation, it was 19 will tell you those that have the testimony of Jesus Christ has the spirit of prophecy. So having the spirit of prophecy is just another prophet, but the difference in the prophet is that they are sent by God. And so when they are sent by God in these last days, they are called apostles because it's, it, it's fruit. From the apostles, you got fruit from the prophets, and, and in the church today, we have to have that. You see, the, the, they want to deny the apostles because you are talking about the Bible said that, that that God put apostles in the church first, and then prophets. Now, this is the foundation. This is the foundation that 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 when you get to the book of when you when you when you get into the priesthood. 
when you start talking to priesthood, you get you 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 you've already established the prophets, and then you have the priest Melchizedek coming to the pro coming to the prophet, and one that was not born and, and, and does not die, and Jesus Christ Himself being of the order of the Melchizedek, where in other words a type Christ, a type Christ. I just don't want you. I, I God God was just bring, I, I can tell you through numerology. I can carry you through those three veins and show you the 12 sons. And each one of those sons being in 12 and then break it down, uh, it would be full for each square. Oh, praise be to God. We don't want to go there, no. A three coming together making four squares. And if 12 was in each, each one, it would equal three. And if you add a multiply, you'd have 144 and 4,000. But we won't go all in it. We won't go all in debt like that because if you go there, then it will say that the book of Revelation in chapter 14 began to talk about the 144 and 4,000 that follow the Lamb wheresoever he goeth. And, and, and that's a very significant statement. And a lot of people get offended because they don't understand the statement. The Bible said these were they though that were not defiled by women. What do you mean defiled by women? Does it have anything to do on the, being on the ministry of women, or does it have anything to do with the birth that the women bring forth? Because there's a there's a cardinal birth, and there's a spiritual birth. There's a cardinal. Uh, that, that there's a pouring out of the oil from one prophet to another. And there's a pouring out the oil from the spirit realm. There, there, there are prophets that the word of God came to. And there's an apostle, the chief apostle, that, that, that the door was sending down and remained upon him. And any fruit from that would, would, would maintain the same order that the, that, that, that the spirit was pulled down from above and it remained on him, as opposed to uh, uh, having a, a prophet there that's not necessarily one that has been sent by God, but is a prophet. Now, don't get don't, don't get me wrong. I'm not saying that all prophets are not sent from God or not ordained by God. That's where you get into the significance of the apostles and the prophets. One of them had oil poured on him, and the Spirit come to him. The other head all pulled on him by God. And the spirit is always with him. And so you have a foundation built that the body of Christ is built on. The foundations of the prophets and the apostles. To say that there are no more apostles, you would have to say that there are no, with no more prophets. Because you couldn't separate the foundation in such a manner. If if, if, if if the 12 sons of Jacob was the initial prophets, then where did Elijah come from? Then where did Isaiah come from? Then where did Jeremiah come from? What makes their ministries significant to us today if there were only 12? Not 12 apostles and 12 prophets, would be 12 times 12 would be 144 and 4,000. Now that, 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 that would, that would multiply, but that would be, that would be doing it in the simple form. That would be doing it in the simple form. That would be doing it not coming up out of the veins and setting the veins in four squares and having the three in each square that would, that would, that would one and the, the 12 in each square and one and two is three. And you get three in each square, but you'd have four squares, so you'd have six and six and six and six, and you still have 144 and 4,000. It, it, it would just match up, but we're not going to go there because we're, we're not we're not going to deal with numerology. But there's nothing wrong with the gates that are set up. There's nothing wrong with the foundation of it. There's nothing wrong with the full gates and the full the full walls. There's nothing wrong with it whatsoever. It lines right up with God's word. But when men 
began to come out of their own mind instead of out of the word of God. When they want to come with their own scenarios and what they believe instead of coming from the word of God, then you have error. So I, 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 I would just think that when he said as 144,000, he said and that father, look at what he said in, in Revelation uh, 14, he said, I looked and lo, a lamb stood in old Mount Zion. And with them, 144,000 having their father's name written in their forehead. Oh, praise be to God. And I heard a voice from heaven as the voice of many waters and as the voice of a great thunder. And I heard the voice of help, hoppers hopping with, with their hops. And they sung as it were a new song before the throne and before the four beasts. And the elders, and no man could learn the song but the hundred and forty four thousand which were redeemed from the earth. And they are, and they, and these are they which were not defiled with women, which was not defiled with women. In other words, uh, uh, on a spiritual level, they were, they were sent by God. They were anointed by God. It's not, it's not, you, you've got the prophets over here and you got prophets here that are sitting over here that the oil was pulled down on and the spirit of God came to. You got the prophets over here that testify uh, Jesus Christ come within the flesh or you got those that have the testimony of Jesus Christ that God gave the revelation to Jesus Christ and Jesus Christ gave um, unto his servants and, and, and they were to take the word to the seven churches. Huh? They were to take the word. In other words, they would, I don't want to go in numerology to ex explain this very simple thing, but they were to take them to the seven churches and the things that must shortly come to pass. So there's a repeat in history. There's some things that the Pharisees and the Sceptics would have you. They would try to war against your mind because of the enmity and because of the mosaic things that the that the, the death and burial of Jesus Christ did away with at the cross. And they would try to bound you under some system of some law that would be something other than faith. It would look very well, but it would have it would be denying the power thereof. We are built on the foundations of the prophets and the apostles, and each one bring forth fruit after his kind. And when we're not defiled by women, it's saying that it's talking about a birth system. It's talking about either being born of the out of the flesh, which is still yet of a woman, or we talking about the birth system, what was being born out of the spirit. These were not defiled. In other words, there is no connection with this birth that this 144 has been. Look, look at what he said. The Bible said these are virgins. Now, virgins are, 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 are pretty much unmarried. Unmarried to the things are on. The Bible said they're not, uh, they don't marry, nor are they given in marriage. And that's a whole nother, that's a whole nother, that's a whole nother field. But these are they that were born. Look, look what it said. These are they which follow the Lamb wheresoever he goeth. These were redeemed from amongst men, being the first fruit unto God and to the Lamb. That's a redemption. In other words, what God is revealing to you. Then don't let nobody tell you that there are no more prophets and don't let nobody certainly tell you that there are no more apostles. Apostles are sent by God. They, Paul saw the Lord himself after the twelve. To believe that would believe that Paul was not an apostle. To believe, to believe what they're telling you is to believe that uh, we are still under the doctrine of the Pharisees and the Sadducees, and man, man could anoint, but God can't. That God has limited and given everything over to man that man could anoint, but God can't. God is the one that brought the apostles in. God has not limited, nor is his hand tied, and, and where the spirit of the Lord is, there's limited. It's a narrow-minded individual 
that could believe that he could limit what God can do and what God cannot do. It's a narrow-minded individual that believes that God is in a matchbox and does not have power to reproduce on the face of this earth today. I hope I'm explaining it somewhat. I know how God explained it to me. I'm being very careful with laying it out for you. But I want you to understand that it, it's very simple. Let me let me carry it to you a simple way. The 12 sons of Jacob is considered the 12 prophets. The 12 apostles or the 12 servants of disciples of Jesus is considered as the 12 apostles. In order to say that there are no more apostles, you would have to say there are no more prophets. If Elijah was truly a prophet, if Jeremiah was true to the prophet, can I go a little further? If Deborah was true to their prophecies, then what you're saying about the apostles would make sense. But Deborah was a prophecy. The Bible declared that she was a prophet. The Bible speaks about Many prophecies. Yet, and they spoke about many prophets. So, you know, in these last days, and I'm just throwing this out there for you now. God wanted to throw it out here now because as we move into the last days and as they began to uh, uh, say darkness is light and light is darkness, as they began to shift back and try to, uh, Jesus said, if they if they if they kept his word, they'll keep your word. If they hated him, they'll hate you. If they try to limit what God can do, they'll try to limit what God can do through you. You are the the child of God that's built on the foundations of the prophets and the apostles, and both of them were believers. Do not allow anything or anybody to come into your system or come into your mind or come into your grace and try to bound you or try to dirty your faith up with doubt. Don't allow anybody to give you a dirty glass of water. Make sure when you're serving up the glass of water that you give a disciple a glass, a cold glass of water in the name of that disciple and make sure it's clean. Make sure if you give a prophet a glass of water in the name of a prophet that you give him a clean glass of water. In other words, don't have craftiness in your heart. Don't use it for a snare or for your own advantage. God loves a cheerful forgiver. We are in the time now that God is about to explode in the lives of his people. We are living in a time now where the darkness that, that's in this earth has no power over you because you have Christ within you, which is the light of this world. There has been a transition. There has been a turning around. Some people would say it's a ship. God has empowered you. You're not going from house to house saying, Know ye the Lord. For all shall know the Lord. God is pouring out his spirit upon all flesh. Don't, don't, don't mess around and God bless you and let somebody deceive you. In what God has called you for or the purpose that he's assigned in your life. 
make sure that as you serve God, you can serve him joyfully, cheerfully, and get the desired results. I'm not saying, you see, you can't turn. The word of God will not return back void. The devil will try to have you in frustration. He will try to steal your joy. He will try to steal your peace. He will try to steal your happiness. These are things of the spirit. And when you have faith in the kingdom of God, these are the things you get from the things that God has assigned for your life to do. The devil can't stop you from doing what God called you to do. He'll try to steal your joy, your peace. He'll try to steal your fruit. He'll try to steal. You ever been around somebody that always tried to steal your credit? Always, always was patting you on the shoulder. But they, they you, you ever, you ever taught somebody something and they come back and try to call themselves teaching you? <laughs> Well, don't, 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 don't allow this to happen. Because God have you moving forward. You have people that have come from other places. See, we are fishermen. We are fishermen. And we are out fishing. We are reconciling back to Christ. Now, the devil is fishing. But he's fishing at you and I to pull us off or to pull things away from us by distracting us by keeping our minds occupied in, in, in a warfare and having no peace within ourselves. When you have peace within yourself, when you've come to know the Lord for yourself, when you've entered into that rest, when you've entered into a place where there's no war going on within you, when you've got that beam out of your eyes, when you sell it within yourself, when there's peace of God flowing through you, when you have a clear vision and a clear eyesight, when the power of God, when you let go and let God and allow God to lead and guide and teach you, when you begin to follow and be led of the Spirit, you can truly be start being called a child of God. And when you begin to be called a child of God, you can possess the powers that a child of God possess, not being a baby, but being a joint heir with Christ, sitting at the table eating the meat, eating the meat. The Bible, the Bible, talk, when the Bible talks about Christ, when the Bible talks about Shiloh, the Bible said in his eyes, oh, praise be to God. Uh, in, 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 in that 49, it, 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 he's talking about, he said, and to the sepulchre shall not depart from Judah nor a lawgiver from between his feet until Shiloh come, and unto, and unto him shall be the gathering uh, of the people, binding, binding his fo his foal unto the vine, and his ass coat unto the choice vine. Listen to this. He washed his garment in wine, and his clothes in the blood of the grape. His eyes were red with wine, and his teeth was white. Huh? Ooh, woo! His eyes were red with wine. You, 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 you've been made free. And your teeth are so white. In other words, the bite, the bite that you have, biting that meat, your teeth are white from purity, from purity, not, not being corrupt, not being, not being distracted, not being, uh, not, not being tied up but being where the liberty is, where the Spirit of God is, having the liberty to do the things that God has called you to do. See, that whiteness uh, talks about a, a certain purity. Your bite, the bite that you have, the grip that you have on things, the purity, the righteousness, the justification, the righteousness of God, the bite that you have. The justification of God. Your eyes.
eyes being just like red, like wine. It's just like it's 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 family. It's blood. It's it's just family. It's just who you are. Dressed in the blood, clothes washed in the blood. It's just who you are. Suffering with Christ, reigning with Christ. It's just who you are. It's just the power of God resonate in your body. You're so you're so empowered. Don't let the don't let the anointing that God have on your life be limited by somebody else playing seeds of doubt or coming in courting you in such a manner to cause questions to rise up in you that you can begin to doubt God or begin to doubt what God is doing in your life. Don't don't let people come that are holier than thou begin to get you off the mall when you got a relationship with God. It's much like Adam. God told Adam not to eat of the fruit of the tree of good and evil. See, when God has revealed some things to you, you stay with God. It's just like the false prophet come and tell you, well, not a false prophet. He was a prophet come to test the prophet and tell the prophet to come to his house to eat. When God had told him not to eat, not to turn to the left, not to not to turn to and not to drink anything. See, when God has made you free, remain free. Don't let nobody or nothing begin to bring in the snares and little traps and little little boundaries. Don't let nobody make you smaller than God has made you. When God has loosed you, when God has freed you, when God has empowered you, walk in the anointing, the anointing of God. Don't let nothing distract you. Don't let nothing turn your head to the left or to the right. You keep right on moving. They're not going to like you. They're not going to love you. They're not going to talk good about you. They crucified your master. They have crucified you. They hated the Lord. They hate you. But you keep right on. They didn't believe in him. They're not going to necessarily believe believe in you and any signs of wonders that come from you they already got an answer they wanted to say that he was working with the with the with the spirit of Belzebub and all of that was because they're not doing it. You ever been around somebody that that, that, that when they're doing it it's all right but when you're doing it there ain't nothing right about it you ever been around somebody that, that, that the only way they can build themselves up is to tear you down? You ever been around somebody that, 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 that don't believe God put his hands on you, but, but believe they the, they the bomb? Don't believe that God can use Rahab, but they believe that God can use say this and say that. Don't, don't, don't be deceived. Don't be deceived. Receive the peace of the Lord in your life. When you confess Jesus out of your mouth, when you believe in your heart, God raised him from the dead, when you call on the name of the Lord, believe in it. Trust in him. Don't let nobody or nothing turn you around. Don't, don't lean, don't, 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 don't. He said, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not unto your own understanding. Acknowledge him and he would direct his foot. See, not in all churches. You have to understand this. I thank God for the late uh, Bishop Bonner. And he preached a sermon, and he was saying that Jesus, God, had put the devil out of his church. And you have to understand that. that it, 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 what, they didn't want Jesus in certain churches. The Jews had already agreed if, they, if you say he was anointed, they were going to carry you out. They, 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 they weren't going to have it like that. And, and, and today, it, it's the same thing. It's the same thing. But I must be about my father's business. I must be about my father's business. The Bible said, because you say you see, your sins are yet still with you. He said, I came. To open the eyes of those that see not. And those that say they see me.
I thank the Lord. We're not going to stay on here because this thing is blank and it's, it, 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 you know, I, I, I thank God. Let, let, let's have some prayer. Uh, I, I want you to realize that God is doing some things in these last days. He's going to use you. And you need to, you need to build up. You need to exercise your faith. You need to grow in faith. And that faith in Almighty God. That faith in what God is doing and revealing in your life. You need to, you need to lean not unto your own understanding. You need to trust in Almighty God. You need to build you a relationship with God. You need to get closer to our God. You need to seek Him out while He may be found. You need to call on our God. You need to trust in Him. You need to you need to believe that He is, and you need to do some diligent seeking to seek Him and His will in your life. And as the will of God began to be manifest in your life, that 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 death of that sin, that sin nature, as it began to fall away from you, and the sin consciousness began to be moved up out of you. You are to press on toward the mark. You are to keep on doing the excellent work. Don't look for nobody to pat you on the shoulder. Don't look for nobody to acknowledge you. Look unto the hill from which cometh your help, because your help will come from the Lord. Your help is going to come from the Lord. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow you. All the days of your life. God already got you covered. Your destiny is already worked out. God has already placed before you an open door. There's an altar that they have no access to. And they would try to stop you from going. There's a door that they can't go in. And there's gripping and griping of teeth outside. Because they cannot enter in because of the blood. Oh, I thank the Lord. Father God, right now, in the name of your son, Jesus, Lord, I give you praise, glory, and honor. We thank you for the, for the, for the, for the destiny that you have for your people. We thank you for the expected end that you have for your people. We thank you, Lord God, that you are drawing, that you are reaching out to your people, that you, that you are calling them to follow you, that you are touching their lives in such a mighty way, that you are revealing things to them that has been hid for so long. Lord God, that you are opening up doors that's been closed. We thank you right now for the great and awesome things that you're going to do through them. And, and Father God, we know that lives are going to be saved, situations are going to be changed that matter in your plan. We realize that as we live upon the face of this earth, that darkness is upon this earth and gross darkness to people. We realize that you have changed things and turned things around and blessed us to have light within ourselves. So therefore, Lord God, we take the journey within. We began to examine ourselves. We began to seek your face. We began to call on your holy name. We become more submissive to you, God. We cried and fall out before you, Lord God, that not our will, but thy will be done. Lord God, you are the hope of glory. You are our all in all, and we ask you just to have your way right now. We thank you for the healing, Lord God. We thank you for the healing. You're doing healing right now upon your people. You have plans for their lives. It's not the end of the road. It's the beginning of the and the increase of the divine destiny that they been dispatched here on the face of this earth to accomplish. So we give you praise, Lord. Uh, we, we, we realize that everything is trying to touch them. Everything is trying to mess them up. Everything is trying to pull them down. But we realize that they are being empowered today by the faith that they have in your son in the name of Jesus. And we give you praise, glory, and honor. We realize that you are speaking great things through them. You are doing awesome things through them. And yet you are revealing yourself to them, that they may know you in the pardon of their sin, that in the last day when they come, you won't be able to say to them, get thee away from me. I've not known you because they have an intimate relationship with you. They 
they've surely known you because they've given their lives over to you. They've been born again. They're not defiled with women. They're not defiled with that birth, with that first birth, but they're free with that second birth, which has made them virgins, Lord. We thank you today in the mighty name of your son, Jesus. We give you the praise, the glory, and the honor. I thank you today, Lord. I thank you. Not my will, but thy will be done in Jesus' name is our prayer. Lord, we release the healing that's necessary for your people, the deliverance that's necessary for your people. We breathe on that situation that's been pounding and pounding and pounding and been so disgusting that we can't stand it. But look at it, just like it came, just like it left. In Jesus' name, to the Lord Jesus Christ be the glory. We thank you to the glory of Almighty God. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, amen. Father, right now, as we enter in prayer for those that are unsaved, those that don't know you in the pardon of their sin, as we, as we begin to seek your face out of Romans chapter 10, as we begin to call on your name right now, Father, as we join with saints around this world that has power from above this, that, 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 that having their feet washed and shunned in the gospel of Jesus Christ, that you are raining out and pouring out your spirit upon, that you are filling up, that you've drawn into this breakthrough hour, Lord God, to be enlightened in the missions and the duties that you called them. And as the word is going forth, Lord God, your light is shining in them. They're receiving the light and doors been opened opening even in their minds. Things are being revealed to them that they've that's been hid from them that the devil wanted to keep hid from them, but it's being revealed today. That light is shining within them and they're seeing more clearly now. And we give you the praise, the glory, and the honor. And yet there are many blessings ahead. There's much, much blessing ahead. They've suffered a lot, Lord God, yet they're about to reign a lot, Lord. In Jesus' name, we give you praise, glory, and honor. Let's pray that all of us pray that we need the Lord. Come on now, we need the Lord. I'm not saying you're not saved. If you're already saved, then, then we're not talking to you. If, you. if you're already comfortable, we're not talking to you, but we're not leaving this air by the grace of God until we can extend this olive leaf out. And we can extend. The hand of God is still stretched out. The hand of God is still stretched out. You know where you are. You know where you are. If you want it real, if you want to be connected to the true vine, I'm not talking about how much you go to church. I'm not talking about how much you shout amen. I'm talking about being connected to the true vine. If you want to be connected to the true vine, let's pray. Father, right now. Come on, pray with me. Father, right now. In the mighty, in the holy. Come on, come on. You're right there in the presence of your home. You're right there in your office. You're right there. It's nobody else business. You're coming to God just like you are. Come on, pray with me. Father, right now, in the name of Jesus, Lord, I confess out of my own mouth, of my own free will, that Jesus Christ it's the Son of God. Nobody's twisting my arm of my own free will. I confess Jesus Christ as the Son of God. Father, I believe in my heart that Jesus was raised, that, that God raised Jesus from the dead. I believe that he was crucified, dead, and buried, and on the third day God raised him from the dead. He ascended into heaven, sat on the right hand side of, come on, pray with me, of God the Father, and from this he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. Father, in the name of Jesus, come into my heart and live. Come into my life and live. Come into my home and live. Father, I know by confessing you, by believing in you, by trusting in you, by calling on you, they're going to talk about me. They talked about you. But even so, Lord Jesus, come! 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 Oh, glory, hallelujah. Whosoever called, upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. That's God's word, not returning back void. His promises will not return back void. He sworn by his own name. God will fulfill his promise in your life. You be empowered. You keep right on pressing on. God put in the church first apostles, 
prophets, everybody might not be who they say they are, but don't let them turn you away from who God has said in your life. Don't let them turn you away from who God said in your life and to bring you into the presence of Almighty God. I give God praise, glory, and I love you. Nobody love you more than we do except Lord than I do. Except the Lord. I thank you right now. In Jesus' name, have your way. Have your way, Lord, in Jesus' name. Y'all pray for us. We're praying for you. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, and amen.